by the name of Johnny. Johnny is an everybody man. Thinks life is kind of funny. Yeah. Funny for Kia, that is. Johnny cares about war. Johnny cares about cancer. Johnny wonders if there's any hope. Wonders if there is an answer. Yeah. Thinks about life and what's more. Is there a God? He's not sure. To look at hope, thinks it's just another pipe dream. But someone cares enough to help. It's just another hope pipe dream. Yeah. Keep on looking. Johnny, keep on looking. Johnny, keep on searching. Keep on searching. It's a rotten world to live in, there's no justice anywhere The rich have got, the poor just rot, and no one seems to care If you're looking for the culprits, I can show you two or three One beside me at the bar, one behind me in the car And the third is the fellow next to me If there's plenty, someone gets it, if there's not, some don't go short the strong steal, the weak squeal, and the guilty don't get caught. If you're looking for the culprits, I can show you two or three. One beside me at the bar, one behind me in the car, and the third is the fellow next to me. The country's in a muddle, and we don't produce enough. Some are hazy, some are lazy, and no one. Does it stop? If you're looking for the culprits, I can show you two or three. One beside me at the bar, one behind me in the car, and the third is the fella next to me. The third is the fella next to me. The third is the fella next to me. The trouble with our nation, my friends, is that we are floundering at present in a mood of avoiding our responsibilities, of blaming others for our economic difficulties, and refusing to realize the plain, simple truth... So you're a silly old we, twit. We, <laughs> people, have lost the will to work. Lost it? The will I never to had it. Adversity, <laughs> to struggle hard... He's not like... He's a nation, oh, can't he he can't hear what he's saying. ...to face misfortune and to turn it into triumph. These surely are the joys of life. They may be yours, yeah, mate, but give me the birds and booze any time. <laughs> <you> stupid <laughs> git. Beneath the surface. Good night. <laughs> Say good night, Dicky. Good, good night, night Dicky. All right, fellas, roll your sleeves up now. Backs into it, noses to the grindstones, what? Meanwhile, I'll just pop off to my villa on the Riviera and I'll drop you a postcard every now and then, what? <laughs> What's up, Johnny? Uh, Did you get a bit too near the truth for you? I beg your pardon? Oh, yeah, you're all very ready to knock him, aren't you? But I don't hear any of you suggesting what he ought to have said if you don't agree with what he did say. Easy! What he should have said was, I'm a big stupid nit. And you shouldn't listen to a word I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just in it for the money. Here, here. Hey, you know who he is, don't you? You know what he does. Well, they said he was in business or something. Oh, he's in business, all right. He sits on about ten boards. He's worth more than the Bank of England. He's rolling in it stinking. And the idea of him telling us ordinary blokes what we ought to be doing is hysterical. Or at least it would be if it wasn't such a diabolical liberty. Oh, so you're saying he didn't work for his money then? Oh, no. He gets others to do it for him. <laughs> no, we're not saying that, Janet. But oh, well, you speak for yourself, Mike, because that's what I'm saying. But you're the one that's been... I'm also saying because... now that I object to a bloke like him telling me what I ought to do for the country. Work harder, save more, don't smoke, don't drink, don't spend. Just grow old and die quietly somewhere. That doesn't cost the country anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> Meanwhile, you find blokes like that giving up their big cars and their country mansions. Because right. You don't find people like that spending their holidays at home working for no pay. Not likely. But if he does, they've funny. got, they're off to the south of France. And the Dolce Buddy Vita. Right. Right what? Well, what you just said. Well, say something other than right. <laughs>
All right. Oh, you could say wrong, Mike, and show your independence. Do you know what I think you should do, Johnny? What? Put yourself up for Parliament. That is a brilliant idea. No, I'm serious. <laughs> I mean it. Look, love, you don't just stand for Parliament, <laughs> not just like that. I mean, don't talk wet. Well, everybody's got to start somewhere. And it's usually when they've got something to offer, something to suggest, you know, something constructive. Oh, you really did go for the bloke on the telly tonight, didn't you? Not go for him, no. I'd I just... watch it, mate. You've got competition there, you know. <laughs> I just thought he made a couple of good points that were worth listening to. Look, love, he's the one that should be boosting his exports, not us. It's tycoons like that that can get the country out of the mess it's in. What does he do, though? He blames all the little blokes, all the blokes that are too small to fight back. Well, why don't you go and tell him? Alright. There's nothing you can tell us, mate, we didn't know before. And if there was, we shut our ears, we think you're just a boy. Don't listen to his cunning words, it's all a great big trick. Never mind the argument, shut a brick. People, mate, it's nothing but a blot. He's just a cheap and trousers man, and what he says is rot. Don't listen to his cunning words, it's all a great big trick. Never mind the argument, just a brick. Tell him, brother, the trouble's caused by men like him. Go out, throw your face. Aye, plan the bomb. Burn the bomb. Burn the human race. Down. Never mind the argument, shut a brick, shut a brick, shut a brick. She late then? Oh, just a bit. She'll be here any minute now, though. I'll give you five to one she doesn't turn up. You what, eh? Ten to one. I mean, you're actually saying that Johnny here, England's answer to Steve McQueen. You're telling us that he has been stood up. Come on, never, not in a month of Fridays. She'll be here, she's just 15 minutes late, that's all. Oh, I don't know. What, Johnny? Hey, what do you mean, what? I mean, what don't you know? What? I don't know, I asked you. Oh, shut sure up, will you? He's getting a bit edgy. You notice know that, Mike? I know it's that said, yeah. Hell hath no fury like Johnny Brown scorned, you know. If she doesn't turn up, anything could happen. I know he's a tiger when he gets worked up, you know. He will do anything. Right on the walls. Stamp his feet. Slap his wrist. Stick his tongue out. Listen, you layabouts, why don't you just cream off that? <laughs> what do you want to hang about here for, anyway? Oh, Can't the... you find your own women? The lad's upset, Ted. He's upset. I reckon she's really got through to him. Mr. Love is a man. Love is a Get right out of here, hey, you, I shall... You won't do anything rash, Johnny, will you? I mean, you know, there are other fish in the sea. Look, what are you whittling on about? Oh, forget her, Johnny. Don't let her ruin your life. Oh, he's right, you know, Johnny. Hey, Mike, we can't leave him on his own. No. In this mood, he may do anything. Yeah. Chuck himself in the canal. I've seen it happen, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Thwarted lovers and all that. Oh, well, if thing. you're not gonna go, I am. Good night. Good, Good night, night, Johnny! <laughs> Silly old twits. Johnny. Oh, so you decided to come after all. I'm sorry I'm late, love. Hey, well, we did say eight o'clock, didn't we? We didn't say 23 and three-quarter minutes past, did we? I mean, I could be wrong, of course. Oh, honestly, but, uh... I couldn't help it, love. But you see, Mum wasn't feeling so good, so I had to cook Dad's supper, and it, well, it made me miss my last part. Well, you got that off very pat, I can say that. Happens to be the truth. Okay. Well, now, come on. I have apologised. I mean, I can't go away and come back 20 minutes ago. Okay, forget it. Hey, it is the first time, Johnny. Hey, what would you say if I did it? Oh, that's easy. What did I say to you when you were over an hour late last Friday? Yeah, well, that was very different, wasn't it? Oh, come on. Don't let's start an argument. I just want to point out that you're not so good when it comes to keeping time. I told you what happened last week. Baby, don't you blame me now for being late. But there was this football match to see. Sorry, baby, if I kept you waiting by your gate. Though I love you, you know what football means to me. 
baby, I'm sorry. Baby, I'm but sorry. when I got back home, I found my suit was at the cleanhouse. I had to go I had down to the road to ask you to stand and see my suit was really there. Don't you blame me now for being late Cause I was unavoidably delayed Cause when I got my suit and got back home again A friend of mine was waiting and he just stayed What could I say? I had to ask him in and sit and talk a while What could I do? So baby, don't you blame me now for being late Cause I was unavoidably delayed And when I got my suit and got back home again A friend of mine was waiting and he just stayed he just stayed, don't blame me, sorry baby, he just stayed, don't blame me, sorry girl, he just stayed, sorry baby, don't blame me. And so to our final program of the evening. Hey, Blake. Oh, thank you, you and good night. night. Salford. Oh, charming. You prefer his company, that old creep, to me, do you? No, it's our local vicar. Hey, fancy seeing him on the telly. Oh, and exciting. We're only affected by it from time to time. But there are those of us, generally the old, but stretching through society and affecting the shy, the nervous and the sick, who live with this problem all day, every day. I'm speaking, ladies and gentlemen, of loneliness. Now, you may feel alone, small, helpless, you may feel there's no one to turn, to turn to, no one big enough to cope with your problems, no one patient enough to listen to your troubles or sympathetic enough to do something about them. But there is. God loves you. And Smug, no matter how much... smiling hypocrite. How do you know what he's like? Oh, look, it's obvious, isn't it, love? There he sits in his cosy little studio. He gets into his car, he drives to the big vicarage, he drinks tea, he eats tea cakes with the mother's union, and he has got the nerve to talk to us about loneliness. Now, what does he know about it? Don't tell me. Tell him. Ah, fat chance. Well, I've told you he's our local vicar and his church is just near our street. I mean, if you think he's talking through his hat, then why don't you tell him? Yeah, look, they're all the same, you know, these uh, priests. They're just a lot of hot air, but deaf to the world. Then shout. Hey? Make yourself heard. Christ did. Yeah, well, I'm not Christ, am I? The moment you know anything, Johnny, you bang on about how Wrong everybody is, but you never say what is right. You never say what people ought to do. Goodbye, Johnny. I'll see you. Oh, well, don't go yet. Let's stay a while. Why? Oh, look, am I as loud-mouthed as all that? I never said you were loud-mouthed. Oh, look, love, it's... I just do get bothered about these people he goes on about. I mean, these lonely ones. Well, that's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong in that. It's you I'm worried about. Me? cloud of illusions, living in castles of dreams, turning your eyes from the pain and the lies, pretending it's not what it seems. Johnny, wake up to reality, daydreams have gone with your youth. Johnny, confess that your life's a mess, Johnny, wake up to the truth. That everything's going your way Refusing to see when it's not Shutting your mind to the problems you find And walking away from the lot Johnny, wake up to reality Daydreams have come with your youth Johnny, confess that your life's a mess 
Johnny, wake up to the truth. 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 Come along, Mr. Brown. Uh, sit down there. Hey, uh, I don't think I've met you before, have I? Not properly, no, sir. Are you in my parish? I don't know. You don't know? Well, I don't know how far your parish spreads now, do I, Vicar? No, no, of course. I suppose you wouldn't. Anyway, what was it you wanted to see me about? Oh, well, it was about, uh, about your programme the other night. Uh, my television programme? Yes. Ah, uh, now, which one? I did five altogether, Monday to Friday. Oh, well, yes, it was the one where you banged on about where you spoke about loneliness. Oh, yes, that one, yes. Yes, well, the fact is... Yes? <laughs> well, the fact is, every night, some important person stands up and preaches to the rest of us about religion and politics and the economy and tells us how we're all going to the dogs and that, but they don't seem to be including themselves. They seem to be saying that it's all our fault, blaming us. Surely I didn't say that it was your fault that some people are lonely? Oh, no, not in so many words, but... Well, frankly, I mean, what do you know about it? About loneliness? Yeah. I mean, no one's coming up with any bright ideas as to how to get rid of loneliness. Oh, no. Just five minutes sob stuff lasting at night on the telly and your conscience is clear. Well, I know that smugness is an occupational hazard with clergymen, but I am surprised that is how you ended up by thinking of my program as a sop to my conscience. Well, wasn't it? I mean, if you're really honest with yourself, wasn't it just a lot of hot air designed to make people feel that by listening to you, they've done their bit? Reminding them of loneliness, but not suggesting anything that might, well, involve them in actually helping. You see, you actually watch the program, Mr. Brown? Yeah, all of it. Hmm. Just about? Not all of it. Yes, well, uh, I, I did switch off to him before the end, but... So I gather. Oh, uh, how? Because, Mr. Brown, had you stayed until the bitter end, you would have heard the appeal I made to anyone concerned with doing more for the lonely than merely talking about them. Appeal? Yes. Asking anyone who might be interested in giving up, say, one hour a week in visiting the old, living by themselves, to write to me? No, I... I, I guess I must have missed that bit. Yes, well, you know, these letters have arrived today. And I expect there'll be many more to follow. Yes. Well, look, uh, look, Vicar, I'm very oh, sorry no, I came no, around. No, I don't rush away, Mr. Brown. You know, Jesus mentioned the man who walked around with a log in his eye, offering to remove splinters from the eyes of others. Yes, well, I must have a forest stuck in mine. <laughs> well, we're all blind in some ways. But you've shown that you care, and that's the chief thing. After all, we both have our faults. Me with my pompous epilogues, the viewers switch off before the end, and you accusing people of something before you've heard about, if you'll pardon my saying so. Be my guest. You know, I was just having some tea. Why don't you join me? I'd like that. Ah, in there, in the dining room. There is a man and once since time began who has the right to criticize he is good he is strong but who wise opposed to every wrong where is that man the only one since time began in the manger on a Man. The only one since time began 
Satmaran.